Sit right down and I'll show you where my dreams began. I'm Michael Dugan, your culinary host, guiding you through the chef's journey. Join me at the chef's table where you'll experience stories, secret sauces, signature dishes, and kitchen disasters. Today, our guest is Rasha Yunin. She's the owner and chocolatier of Bon Chocolat. Chocolate is her passion, she says. I thrive to create high-quality chocolate bonbons and confections from the finest ingredients, all natural ingredients with no preservatives. I enjoy chocolate so much that I want to share it with people. I'm an architect by trade and a chocolatier by passion. Starting my journey of chocolate making as a professional chocolatier has been one of the most fulfilling and interesting adventures of my life. Welcome, Rasha, to the show. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. I'm really excited and happy to be here. I love podcasts so much, especially with you. I'm, cool. I'm really uh, thrilled to be here. Thank you. Is this your first time being on a podcast? Yes, it is on, awesome. uh, my first time. I encourage you to do it more because it's a really great way to get the word out about your passion. Let's start out with... Did you have any kind of early connection to food growing up as a child? Any special dish, maybe chocolate, dessert, or any anything? When I think about my childhood, so I grew up in Egypt, and oh, I moved wow. here in 2006. But growing up in Egypt, I was in like middle class family. And I, al I always remember my father bringing us candy or imported chocolate from his travels. So whenever he travels for business, and it was inside Egypt, he didn't travel for outside of the country much, but he would travel to other cities in Egypt and they have imported chocolates and he will bring this to us. So the two really, that was very early in my childhood. The two early memories is eating Kinder eggs. I don't know if you're familiar with them. No. It's available in markets right now in, in the U.S. And it's a Swiss chocolate and it's shaped like a candy, excuse me, like an egg. And it has milk chocolate exterior and white chocolate interior. And it's a shell, so it's very thin, but it's delicious and it's fulfilling. And inside the egg, it has a toy. A small, tiny toy that you have to tinker with it to build it up and then play with it. So it was like a small, very small, tiny toy inside that kinder egg. And I had a box full of those toys. I was saving them and collecting them. And also I remember another treat that my father would bring is like a small container that has chocolate spread. It's something similar to Nutella, but it wasn't Nutella. It was very small dish. It was a tiny spoon. It's like a couple of bites. But I always remember not eating too much because those candies are not huge in size. But it's but it was fulfilling. It was nice. And I always remember my mom. She didn't like us to eat a lot of junk foods and a lot of sugar. And, and we would eat mostly homemade or home-cooked meals. But she didn't say anything about chocolate. Chocolate was fine in our home. So chocolate wasn't like a junk food or a processed food, if you want to say. And this is to some extent true. But of course, people now, they have to look at the ingredients when they buy their chocolates. They need to make sure that it's real chocolate, doesn't have a lot of added ingredients that not it's unnecessary and it's good quality chocolate. I always say chocolate is not necessarily candy. It's not full of sugar, yeah. but you have to look at the ingredients and you have to know where you're getting your chocolate and what's the resources and what's the story behind it, who makes it and how they make it and what's in it. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. We're going to talk a lot about chocolate today, but just so we can get to know you, when you were growing up, what did you aspire to be as a child? And then carrying forward in life, what did you end up doing as an adult? So I always 
wanted to work in design or in a creative profession. So I loved crafting or crafts, making crafts, and I used to draw a lot. So I always wanted to be something related to design and creative job. And I wanted to be an interior design, but I ended up going to architecture school, wow. which was perfect That's for great. me. I entered architecture college in Egypt. And then I moved here and I started working as an architect. And it, it's a fun journey with each project. It's very creative, but also has another aspect of it that's not all about creativity, but also about public health and making sure the design fits the people who's going to use it okay. and all of that. So it's I got exposed as my career developed into the technical aspect of being an architect, mm -hmm. which was really fulfilling and, and good too. Wow. So how did you end up going from being an architect to having this passion for chocolate and becoming a chocolatier. Can you tell us a little bit about the story? I love to find out the roots of why people do what they do in, in the yes. culinary world. So share a little yeah. bit about that. Besides like to eat chocolate and oh, yeah. enjoy chocolate very From much. childhood, certainly. <laughs> I, it happens that I was a Girl Scout troop leader for my daughter's troop. And we were always looking for fun activities to do with the girls to get them exposed to different experiences. We did a candy making class with them. So it mm -hmm. was like melts. And it was a local place in Bothell. And now they moved to Linwood. It's called Dawn Candy and Cakes. They still do some of those classes. And the girls had a blast just making their own candies, mold, like taking the candy melts and put them into molds and create a box of candy. And I noticed that they have an adult class that's called chocolate truffles. Mm. So I, I took that class and I went actually by myself. I just wanted to learn and wanted to, to try that because we had so much fun in the candy making class with the yeah. girls. So I said, no, I want to do that. as And, and it's going to be like a time for me, not for necessarily with the kids. So I took that class and this was back in 2013, 2014. And I loved this class. It was two hours or maybe more of fun, just making truffles, playing with the flavors and adding ingredients and decorating the truffles. And I think I still have a picture of that box that I went home with. It was a large quantity of, I don't remember how many truffles, but it was an experience. And I, what, what I loved this class is playing with the flavors, adding and combining f different flavors with chocolate. And of course, at that class, we used just one type of chocolate. I wanted to learn more about chocolate and what does it mean to temper chocolate? What's the different origins of chocolate and mm. how, what is chocolate making and all of that. So I start reading and doing research and, and then I, I decided I want to do this. I want to learn more about this. Like okay. the, the free information is not getting me as right. much as I want. So I signed up and took a chocolatier class Ooh. with Ecole Chocolat. Uh, they are located in uh, Vancouver. And uh, it was, I believe it was a six months class. I oh, don't wow. remember. And that was in 2016. And it was a, a lovely experience. And then after that, I start just making chocolate for me and my for my friends and getting experiencing different flavors and different designs and different ways to make the bonbons, which are Chocolate truffles but in a mold. So if it's if chocolate ganache is, is rolled and dipped in chocolate or covered in like cocoa powder, that's a chocolate truffle. Mm. But if it's molded, then it's a chocolate bonbon. So that's how I started. I'm happy that I decided to go professionally and took that class. Wow. But at that point in my life I wasn't I didn't have a this, this decision to open my own chocolate business. It was okay. just for me knowing more about chocolate. And of course, that triggers like 
getting exposed to different chocolate makers and different mm -hmm. crafts and experiencing a little bit more about chocolate origins and different tastes and all of that. How do you collaborate with a chocolate maker? And, and what is a chocolate maker? Is it bean to bar? Is it... I'm just yeah, trying to so visualize for our chocolate maker is a bean to bar like Theo chocolate or right now Spanaker chocolates in Seattle. They are bean to bar local and I actually work with them. So I take some of their chocolate that they make and uh, make it into chocolate bonbons. Cool. So that's how we collaborate. I take the chocolate they make and I, as a chocolatier, I get to choose what chocolate to use based right. on the different taste and different percentage of cocoa and yeah. on all of that. The reason I ask is because a, a while back I did an interview with a chef, a chocolatier, but he's a chef and his name is Chef Jeffrey Gardner. And Chef Jeffrey is out of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. And he has a company called Marsata Chocolate, and he creates chocolate from the bean. Yes, so he does the yes. whole thing. And the he does the whole thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. The interesting story about him is that he was a hockey player. And then he had okay. this passion for chocolate, and he connected oh, with yeah. his wife, and they built this business. And I should connect you. He's a really nice guy. I, I just I love him. And I met him on Clubhouse, which is an audio-only app, about two years ago. Okay. And he was wrapping chocolate during the interview. So there's a little oh, bit of sound God. there that kind of, it's what is the sound? But it's actually live where he's wrapping chocolate. So it's cool. Oh, nice. But you just yes. made me think of that. So that's where that question. Some chocolatiers will make their own chocolate from Binto Bar. That's a lot. That's full time. I, it's a lot. Yeah. And I, yeah. I just want to focus on just creating bonbons and confections for now. And you never know what will happen in the future. I liking the idea of choosing what, from what's out there yeah. and not be just solo limited with what I do. Of course, w chocolate makers like make different flavors and create a lot of different chocolates. But I like just I can go and choose the best or the best in my opinion, and also be mindful of the sustainability issue in chocolate or in the cocoa business and all of that and choose what which chocolates I like to use to create my confections or my bonbons. Mm. So at least this is where I am right now. That's great. Specializing yeah. in a specific area. And so can you share a little bit about the story behind the name and the concept of what you do. Was it hard to create the name? I know for Voice for Chefs is very difficult because so many names yes. are taken out there. And it just came to me one day and I had some friends help and we put it together. But how did you come up with a name and, and what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. So coming up with the name was very hard. Starting up, I just wanted the name to be easy for people to remember and mm -hmm. to have chocolate in it. So that's why I didn't use my name because I just wanted chocolate in it. And I, I always go for simple stuff. I don't like complicated things. I don't know. But I said, what about good chocolates? Okay. <clears throat> so bon chocolat means good chocolates. But I used a French name just to make it because the confections I make is European inspired. So that's where the, the French word comes from. And why French? Because I, I speak French as well. I, I didn't want to use a language that I'm not familiar with. So I used Bon Chocolat and I, I added the S at the end. So Bon Chocolat, it should be in, in the French language. The S is the adjective follows the name. So Bon Chocolat will have S in the Bon and S in the chocolate or oh, chocolat. Oh, I see. But I decided I don't want to add the S in the bond because it's going to be like too unfamiliar to people. Confusing globally, I think. Yeah, yeah. I decided to take the S of bond uh, and just keep it bon chocolat, which translates to bon chocolates in okay. English. No, that's great. And can you walk us through a little bit of the creative process when you develop chocolate flavors? Because you have some really great flavors like pistachio and strawberry champagne and I've tried them. I love them. I gave them as a gift to my wife for Valentine's and she offered a few to me. Can you share a little bit about the development of flavors, the ideas behind that? 
I'm happy to hear that you like the chocolate and your wife did like the chocolate. I find a lot of things inspiring to me when it comes to flavors. But the most important thing is when you try something and you like, and then you think, what can I combine this with or which chocolate I can combine this flavor with? I started with doing just the classic flavors like raspberry, the caramel, although it's, I have my own twist on them. But it's I started with the classic flavors and then start adding some innovative flavors like the cardamom I have. It's very popular too. Yeah. It's cardamom and vanilla, but it's you, you really taste the cardamom. And the, the strawberry champagne, of course, and the pistachio sherry. Pistachio is really good. Oh, This is one of my favorite and the best. I have people asking about it all the time. Love it. And I think what I really after is balance in flavor. So I don't like to something to be overly sweet or overly bitter. So okay. that's okay. what I'm aiming for so when whenever i create a a new creation or a, a new bonbon i'm always looking how to balance the flavors out not to be too sweet or not to be too too salty not to be too bitter just balance i think this is it the balance is very important for me and who are your customers where do they come from so before right now i have a location in Bothell, Bothell downtown. Right. Yep. We just opened recently. But before that, since I started my business, I've been doing like artisan uh, markets and crafter markets. So I would meet people and they uh, can try my chocolate or buy it. And it's a very, I, I love those crafter markets because it's the connection with people. I'm there and the people are there and asking questions and I'm interacting with them and telling them about my chocolate. This is where my base customers came from, just crafter markets, artesian markets. And I think it's becoming getting like word of mouth right now. So people are telling or sharing the chocolate because a lot of people or a lot of my customers just buy the chocolate for someone else to give as gift, which is, I love that. Also, I have an Instagram and Facebook page. So I think that is where I connect with my clients. That's wonderful. Your chocolates are amazing. I was going to say it on, they only lasted two days, the whole box, two days. <laughs> we just kept eating them. And my wife said, you want another one? They were really good. We devoured them. Oh, thank you. The flavors are just so unique. And it's like you handpicked those flavors. And that's what I saw and I was impressed by. There's a coffee one too. I think my favorite is one of the caramels, but I love salted caramel. I love caramel. But the hazelnut was good too. Anyway, so as we go on, can you share any memorable experience or story related to your journey as a chocolatier? I have a lot of good memories, but the one that sticks to me right now mm. is I remember when I was taking the chocolatier professional class and I we had to have homework and hands-on experience. Okay. And one of the homework exercises was to do a chocolate tasting event or party where mm. I host the tasting and I try the tasting as well with a, a few people, like three or five people, and try different chocolates. And we write down what's the aromas, what is the flavors, which one we like better and all of that. So I remember just preparing for that event or that party and inviting my friends over. And it was so much fun to go and select different chocolates from the supermarket or from crafter or like more sophisticated chocolate printing the papers that we're going to put the chocolate on and write what we taste. And I invited a couple of, of my friends. And what really touched me is how my friends took the time to come and help me and support me on my homework. Mm. Even if they weren't very interested in, in the chocolate or didn't know what to expect on that exercise. So I really appreciate that. The, and they came and we had a blast and we were trying chocolate and writing down what did we experience and which one did we like better. And of course, it's different for everyone. But just the support of, of family and friends and believing in me along the way mm -hmm. since I started. Till now, I have my friends and my, of course, my family. They, they support me and they believe in me. And this is really nice. That's I'm important. fortunate to have that. Yes. 
It's very important. And do you have any shout outs you want to give? Is there anyone that helped you along in the business or anyone that helped you along on the culinary side? Anyone you can think of that you want to just say thank you for what you did? Receive $10 off your next purchase with Voices for Chefs 10. You don't know what to make for dinner again? You want to explore new cuisines, but you don't have time? What if you have new inspirations and we provide you with ingredients and recipes? We know you want to travel, learn new foods, explore the world, but life's responsibilities keep getting in your way. What if you can bring those experiences to your home neatly packed into a box? Lady Boot Collective is a subscription service that finds real people from around the world to create beautifully curated assortments of recipes, ingredients, and cultural content. Not only do we include cultural ingredients, but also a set of detailed recipe cards with instructions on how to use them. Each box also has a QR code that when scanned takes you to tons more global exploration to immerse yourself in. Everything from film to lifestyle, art to history, it all can be found here. Live your life to the fullest. Subscribe now and don't miss out on the next cultural adventure. Lady Boot Collective. Always exploring. So far, everyone I met, either they have a small business or have a chocolate business, they have been so helpful to me, giving me tips or helping me or supporting me in my journey. Okay. Is there any advice you could give to somebody that's aspiring to do what you do and become a chocolatier, maybe open a shop? or go into pastry, or just has a real passion for it like you do? There's a few things that people can start with. First of all, know your chocolate. Know the mm-hmm. chocolate well. Okay. Chocolate is a very delicate and very special product. And it needs to be handled with knowledge and care. So just know the chocolate and also experiment with it and play with it. And, and the more you play with it, you will know it more. I always recommend professional learning if someone is interested to do something like that, even not necessarily professionally, but professional learning is really key to make you understand the product you have in hand and what you can do with it. And also continue to learn because it's not something that you can do once and and be done with it. It's a journey. And I always tell myself, I need to learn more about this and continue to learn and add to my uh, knowledge. And practice is key for progress and success. And also try other chocolates, try different chocolates from different locations, different areas, different chocolatiers, different chocolate makers. Trying different chocolate really opens the awareness of what's out there and what you can do to, what you can do to not necessarily do it better. Sometimes you do it better, but also you do it your way and experience, express yourself through your products. So trying other chocolates is key. I eat a lot of chocolate, not only my chocolate, but other chocolates as well. So I, mm. I buy a lot from cho- different chocolate makers, different chocolatiers. Whenever I travel to a city inside the U.S. or outside, like out of country, I always do a chocolate tour. So wow, I, think, <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. It's one of my best experiences is to try the chocolate overseas and try the chocolate in different cities. So I just try to pick two or three chocolate stores in the area where I'm staying and just go and visit and try some of their chocolates and buy some of their chocolates. That's really, it's really fun experience and it's really keep me aware of what's out there. And it's also... It's really important that I try other chocolates as well. So I think this is a good tip for someone who's interested in chocolate. And last is believe in yourself and what you can offer. Everyone Mm. is unique and everyone brings something unique to the table. So just believe you can do it if you want to start your own business and, and just do it. That's great advice for those that are listening. Just do it. Just go out and do it and learn and study and take some classes. I went to cooking school for two years, probably the best thing I ever did to learn about being a chef. I never made it as a chef. So I became a podcaster because I work in technology. But for me, the best thing I did was the education. The amazing thing about cooking school is that you can open up a recipe book from anywhere, any Mm. culture Mm. and you can cook because you have the foundation. 
So what I think is really important, what you're saying is gain the foundation if you want to go into chocolate making. Exactly. And also if you can find a mentor to mm, help you okay. and guide you, that's also a good tip. Okay. Like I, I follow a lot of chocolatiers and I... Mm. Who do you follow? I don't remember the names on the okay. top of my head right now. Yeah, I always cut stuff out. Oh. I like people to feel comfortable and to open up. And that's the goal of this show is, is yeah. to, to help you feel relaxed so that you can share mm -hmm. your stories. Yes. So looking ahead, what are your goals and aspirations for the future of being a chocolatier in, in your shop? So my goal is to create more chocolates that's... Okay good, more flavors, more products in my shop, to add more products in my shop. And also to key, to stay with all natural ingredients, no preservatives. So this is a key factor for me is the quality of the ingredients that I'm using. Right now I have a small shop in downtown Bothell, but I, mm -hmm. I hope that I can grow into a bigger shop with okay. my own kitchen in the same space. That way we can create more volume of chocolates for people. I start doing this or doing my business because I wanted to share the joy of chocolate with people. And I have one of my friends and she's a great supporter to me. She wrote me a thank you letter or a thank you note. It was like, she said, your chocolate gives joy to people. And I, I thank you for making them because it, it helps me say thank you or spread the, the joy to sure. other people as well. That's my goal to continue doing that. Uh, and also something I, I want to do is to be like mindful more about sustainability and mm -hmm. make my packaging all just no plastic. This is something I'm looking into, but oh. still I wasn't able to do that right now, but I hope in the near future that I can just be a 100 sustainable, no plastic in my packages and all that. Wow. And as we wrap up, is there any special place in the world where you've been that connects food and culture or chocolate and culture? So the best chocolates I tried was in Switzerland, of course. Switzerland are known with their amazing chocolate. And I actually used my milk and my milk chocolate and my white chocolate are Swiss chocolate. Uh -huh. So I love the Swiss chocolate. And also, I want to say France, Paris is, is very charming. Mm. Food and and confections and pastries and chocolates, of course, the best chocolates, bonbons are in France that I've tried. Okay. And the culture of French is really overpowering and I love it. We vacationed in southern France in Bézier, which was mm -hmm. this really cool small town. And it was near Carcassonne and Carcassonne is a castle town. Like yeah. this huge castle is a chocolatier there. And I have a picture somewhere from years ago of this pastry or chocolate chef, right? And he came out and he took a picture with me and I was so inspired oh, by that nice. photo. I'll send it to you if I can find it. It, it yeah. was just, he's really young and he just created these amazing chocolate sculptures. And that really connected to me. Mm -hmm. He was just really genuine. And I think back when I was really in the travel mode and my wife and I were traveling for the first time and that whole experience was incredible and the food was just amazing. But the chocolate, it's to die for. So now that I'm choked up, how do we find you? They can uh, connect with me either uh, through Facebook or Instagram. It's uh, Bon Chocolat or, or my email address. It's uh, bonchocolat.seattle at uh, gmail.com. And I have a, a small location, a small pop shop on Main Street in Bothell downtown. That's another way to come and uh, um, try our chocolates and, uh, yeah, and experience uh, some of what we talked about today. Yeah, we're open uh, Thursday through Sunday at uh, this location, noon to 6 p.m. If you want specific flavors, 
send me an email beforehand and I can prepare a specific box for the specific flavors. Otherwise, we have uh, boxes of assortment of uh, chocolates in the store available. We have some other items as well beside bonbons and we're looking to add more as we grow. Wonderful. Any final message that you want to share with our listeners around the world? I hope I'm inspiring everyone today and I hope you liked our talk today. I just want to say just believe in yourself and connect with people is really important. And chocolate, in my opinion, it can be your messenger. If you don't know what to say, you can just give chocolate to, to someone or a chocolate box. It goes a long way of saying thank you or I, I love you or I think about you or I care about you. So it, it can be your messenger. If you don't know what to say, just give chocolate, give joy to others by sharing chocolate that you like. Wow, that's beautiful. You've created so many memories for so many people and a memory today. So I just want to thank you for being on Voice for Chefs. And thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Follow us on Facebook. Find our website in the show notes. Subscribe on Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen. Leave a comment with five stars and stay tuned for the next episode of Voice for Chefs.